Hey folks, I'm going to give you a little taste of my section of the world, my section of New Hampshire. No, New Hampshire. Um, let's start with this. So how many towns can say they have a redstone missile in, on their town green? This is in the town of Warren in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. This missile came to Warren in 1971. Here's some information on it. So the Redstone missile came to Warren on April 21st of 1971. Native son Henry Ted Aslan brought the missile here. It was dedicated on Old Home Day, July 4th, 1971 by New Hampshire Governor Walter Peterson. Here's a little background on how it came here. So in 1970, while stationed with the Army, I'm sorry, this is by Ted Aslan. In 1970, this is by Ted Aslan who delivered the missile to Warren. In 1970, while stationed with the Army at Redstone Arsenal, Alabama, I noticed a number of redstones lying in the field. I found that they were now obsolete and were surplus. The redstone that is now in Warren had been stripped of its engine, guidance control package, etc., and had been used for display purposes. I thought of the children who were far removed from America's space program, except for television, and that seeing the real thing might interest some child in science or the space program. And the fact that astronaut Alan D. Shepard Jr. was originally from New Hampshire, why, why not take one to New Hampshire? Checking with the U.S. Army at Redstone Arsenal, I was informed that they would release the Redstone for display purposes to a town. The Army stipulated that it would bear no cost in preparing or transporting the system. I then decided that if the town of Warren did accept the Redstone, that I would bear the cost of getting it to Warren. In 1971, the town of Warren voted in the affirmative. After many stops and starts, Irving McDonald Dorchester of Dorchester, New Hampshire, as driver, and I began to trek south with a semi-tractor and a 60-foot trailer loaned to us by Lou Brown of Wentworth and Holders, New Hampshire. Arriving at Redstone Arsenal, the post engineers, after receiving a cashier's check, loaded the Redstone onto our, our trailer, with my past fellow employees just shaking their heads. We immediately began the 1,300 mile trip north. After a stiff fine in Ohio for not having a permit, sucking it up while passing through other states for which we had no permit, taking the wrong route into New Hampshire and missing our escort, breaking down on Main Street in Concord and having to be told to the New Hampshire State House, the Redstone finally arrived in Warren, April of 1971. It should be noted that the welcoming committee in Warren had a false start. When informed that the Redstone was approaching Wentworth, they jumped into vehicles and racing south, they soon discovered that the Redstone sighting was a local septic tank pumper from Wentworth. I knew at that point that I had indeed been correct in bringing, bringing America's space program a little closer to Warren. With the efforts of many volunteers and local organizations giving their time and funds, the Redstone was finally erected and dedicated by then Governor Walter Peterson in July of 1971. Ted Aslan. The eight ton missile is secured in an eight foot deep foundation with five huge steel beams set in cement. A crane transferred the missile onto the upright beams. And there's the beam. Okay, that's stop number one.
Here's the brick store in the town of Bath, New Hampshire. This is the oldest general store in America. And over here is the Bath Covered Bridge. This bridge was uh, repaired, restored, uh, all of the above, about uh, probably about five years ago now. They need uh, a lot of maintenance. These were built a couple hundred years ago and they weren't designed for motor vehicles. Um, so they have to be beefed up to support the weight of the motor vehicles. They were designed for horses and buggies. Um, plus, um, they tend to need repairs on the piers. Because um, with the flooding of the rivers, that takes a toll on the piers. So the piers are the piers are made of stone, so they have to be repaired every now and then. Um, you can see here some new, some of the new beams from the uh, renovation several years ago. A new beam there. Uh, some of these are probably new. But you can see. I used to know all of the different types of uh, bridge construction for covered bridges, but I forget what they are now. You can see the arch here. There's two sets of arches. Arch there. And actually, this one's got three or four. And I've been over this bridge <laughs> hundreds of times. I never even realized that there's, I think, three or four sets of arches here. So, a couple more down here. We'll get to those. Yeah, so here's the third arch here and then another larger one over there so this one I think this one was added in at some point yeah you can see here the original one this is all bolted together so that was added in at some point maybe in a prior um, renovation so that's fairly old you can see another one up here Let's 
see it over there. That was a long arch there, if you can see it. And over on this side, there should be a dam. There's the dam. couple of feet apart. So this has really been beefed up for the weight of motor vehicles. A lot of these old bridges, you can only go one vehicle at a time and you have to go slow. And this one's not as bad because it's been beefed up. But a lot of the old bridges, you really have to go slow over them in one vehicle at a time. Another, another one of the original arches and another one added in. I wish I could remember the name of the uh, bridge design. There's a whole bunch. There's Queen Anne. Um, <laughs> I forget all the others. I forget which one this is. But a lot of this structure is the original structure. It's just been beefed up and added, added to over the years. that is that bridge is a very popular tourist attraction that and the bath store over here they get busloads of people that come from all over from Boston from New York um, they come here they make a quick stop they get to see the covered bridge they go into the store That's another tourist attraction. Do their business and then they're on their way. Another bridge, Swiftwater Bridge. This is in uh, the Swiftwater section of the town of Bath, same town as the uh, previous bridge. This is another tourist attraction, and you can see <coughs> damage up here because because some dummy tried to get over this with a truck. And you see the sign here. 
Weight limit, three tons, passenger cars only. And every once in a while, some dummy tries to get, get across these bridges with a truck. So that's gotta be repaired. This bridge has, was uh, restored uh, God, probably 20 years ago now. Rebuilt, restored. Um, it was in really tough shape before that. Right. Um, a lot of these bridges were damaged primarily by flooding. So these were built to go over the rivers and then in time of flooding, you know, the floods would come up and damage the bridge or sometimes just wash them away. Other bridges were damaged by fire, by arson. So a lot of the bridges that we have in New Hampshire and throughout northern New England have been lost to fire or flooding. Uh, some were saved, some have been rebuilt, some new ones have been built. Uh, this is another tourist attraction here, as you can hear by the music. There's some eddies down here in the Swiftwater River. We've got a lot of vacationers down here, out on the river. Now you can see this one's got a lot of beams too to help support the weight of the vehicles. And this one, this Swift Water Bridge. If I remember correctly, this was rebuilt by the Grayton family, uh, well-known covered bridge builders in the area. And I think they rebuilt this one. So that's another covered bridge for you. So you see all this, this was carved out by the glaciers thousands of years ago. They carved this low spot out, um, that side there, the mountain side there was carved out, gouged by the glaciers. Um, and you can kind of see these white lines on the granite there. And I don't know, I've been looking at that for many years, and I don't know if those white lines are in the granite, or if those are something left by the glacier. I 
think they're in the granite.